Now it's time for arts and crafts with Tyler. Now you can make anything you want with marshmallow peeps. Just, you know, a tallest tower. And that was arts and crafts with Tyler. In middle school, my dad's job was a salesperson. And for a little while he sold office furniture, and then for a while he sold trucks, which in middle school, as a middle school guy, was the coolest thing ever. He would sell these like huge like semi trucks, like the things you see on the highway that are just like, okay, that's a big truck. Or sometimes he would sell tow trucks. Now, what was cool about this was he would bring trucks home every once in a while. So I'd like, you know, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, what's that in my driveway? It's a huge truck. What's that doing there? One day, he brings home the coolest truck I've ever seen. Now, I don't know if you've seen a truck like this. It was basically like a pickup truck. If you like took a pickup truck and multiplied it by three, that's math. Basically, big, big pickup truck. I've even got a picture, I'll show you. Cool pickup truck. So that was what was sitting in my driveway, and my dad says, all right, it's time to go to youth group. It's time to go to our Wednesday night youth group, my middle school gathering at my church, and we're gonna take this pickup truck. And I think this is the coolest thing I've ever done. So we hop in, go for a drive. My dad drops me off at church and I can see my friends in the parking lot and they're there and they're, look, they're like, whoa, look at that cool truck. Next thing you know, boom, I step out of the truck and I'm like, what's up guys? And they're like, is that your truck? Do you own that? And I'm just like, no. But it's cool, right? But just for that day, I felt so cool and so important. Now, have you ever been there? Like people around you knew that you were important? Like you were on top of the world, like you were seen and you were noticed and you were valued by the people around you. Maybe your latest TikTok went viral or you're the top scorer in your sport. Maybe you're the smartest person in your class or you just got voted class president. Maybe you recently earned your black belt in martial arts. Now, if you've ever had an experience like that, then you know just how good it feels to be seen as important to somebody else. But if we're all honest, I think we'd also say there are places in our lives where we don't feel so important. And that feeling, it's not so awesome. It's less awesome. Maybe you're not playing as well in soccer as you'd like, or maybe you just can't understand math, but everybody else in the class seems to just like get it. Maybe you feel like you're an outsider at school and you wonder if anybody even knows your name. Maybe nobody ever likes or comments on the videos you post or nobody invites you to hang out. Things like that, they make us feel anything but important, don't they? I think the reality is that most of us probably feel unknown or unimportant at some point. We wonder if we're really noticed or seen by the other people at school or at home or at even here at church. It seems like only certain people get to feel important all the time. And we're just lucky to feel important every once in a while. Now, if you've ever felt that way first, I wanna say, I'm so glad you're here. My hope is that when you're here, you're treated with dignity and respect no matter what. My hope is that we would see all people as important and worthy of love. And second, I wanna tell you a story about somebody else who probably felt just like we do sometimes. Somebody who didn't think they were all that important. And what's cool is that as we look at this story, we'll see that Easter actually shows all of us one really big truth. We're important to the one who is most important. Today, we're actually gonna talk about the most important event in the Christian faith. And to start, we're gonna see what this incredible woman named Mary had to do with it. Now, when you hear the name Mary from the Bible, you may think immediately about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Or maybe you've heard the story of a guy named Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Now, you might think that we're talking about one of those Marys today. You'd be wrong, different Mary. While both of those are pretty important women in the Bible, they're not the Mary we're talking about today. This Mary may not have been the most well-known Mary, but what we're about to learn about her life is powerful. This Mary was from a small fishing village called Magdala. So she was known as Mary Magdalene. Now, Here's the thing, it's actually a pretty big deal that we can talk about any of these Marys today. Because at the time they lived, women didn't have a lot of rights or freedoms or opportunities like the men did in their culture. That's actually one reason there are a lot more men talked about in the Bible than women. And that's also what made Jesus so interesting. 
In a culture that gave women less rights, less leadership, and less opportunities, Jesus went out of his way to value women and give them opportunities. In fact, we know that during his life and ministry, he was close to Mary Magdalene. He knew her by name. He saw her as important. We know this because some of Jesus' closest followers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, recorded it for us in the Bible. And because Jesus was close to Mary Magdalene, she's included in the story we read every year at Easter. She's a part of the event that shaped our Christian faith. So, let's take a look. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. So to catch us up, Jesus had just been killed. He was crucified on a cross, which was a horrible and public death that friends like Mary Magdalene witnessed. Then he was buried in a tomb. And because she cared so much about him, Mary went to visit Jesus' grave. But what did she find? That it was empty. Empty, empty, empty! Did somebody move his body? Thinking that that happened, Mary began to weep even more. Then we learned that Mary was visited by two angels who wanted to know why she was so sad. And you're telling me, wait, wait, angels? <laughs> That's amazing. But. Right after that, something amazing happened that took Mary totally by surprise. Something that changed things not just for Mary, but for all of us who believe in Jesus even still today. Take a look. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbani, which is Hebrew for teacher. So there Mary was, weeping over the death of her friend and teacher. And then just like that, another person appeared. Now, of course, thinking Jesus was dead, she didn't recognize that it was him. After all, she saw him die. But then Jesus used Mary's name. He wanted her to know that it was him, that he knew her that he saw her. And when he spoke her name, she recognized him immediately. And of course, she was in shock. See, Jesus had just risen from the dead. That's what we celebrate at Easter as the resurrection. Now, resurrection, what that means is, to resurrect something means to bring something back to life. So at Easter, we remember that Jesus died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. And then we celebrate the fact that he walked out of the tomb three days later. In other words, he came back to life, which is what we call the resurrection. See, Jesus' resurrection is so important. Because of it, we can trust that God is who he says he is. Jesus spent years in his ministry telling his followers that this very thing would happen, that his death and his resurrection were coming and that these events would change everything. And then it actually happened. It was all true. And because of that, we can believe all the things Jesus promised to us are true too. We can walk confidently knowing that we can be close to God. Jesus made that possible for us for eternity through the resurrection. That's what makes Easter so important. And one of the reasons we know this important thing happened is because Mary was there to see him. She witnessed it with her own eyes and she followed through on an important task. Take a look. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Mary was the first person to witness the resurrection. She was the person he asked to share the good news with his closest followers. And I love how this passage ends. She gave them his message. I mean, Talk about an important job. Because Mary believed, she knew what Jesus' resurrection meant. She said yes to sharing that message with the rest of his followers. She is one of the reasons we have record of those moments still today. And that makes her an important piece of the most important event in our faith, Jesus' resurrection. So maybe you felt unimportant. Maybe you feel like nobody else sees or notices you that people don't understand you, that God would never choose or love you. Well, let me just assure you that what we celebrate every year at Easter proves that you are not only important, 
but you are important to God. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for you, to come back to life so you can be close to him forever. He did that because of his love for you. He did that because your life is important to him. Here's what I want you to remember. Easter reminds us we're important no matter what. God chose somebody like Mary Magdalene to help spread the word about the resurrection. He chose her to be an important part of the story. And what's cool is that the same can be true for us. God didn't just send Jesus to die for those people back then. His resurrection wasn't just to help them. He didn't just want people like Mary to know he saw and cared for them. He did it for us too. No matter how other people see us, no matter how we feel, the resurrection proves that we're loved, we're seen, we're chosen, and we have value. Easter reminds us we're important no matter what. The question is, how do we begin to believe that? First, I think we need to think about how we see ourselves. Do you believe that you're important to God, to those around you? Even to yourself, do you talk down to yourself? Do you allow negative thoughts or words about who you are or how others see you take up space in your mind? Do you let other people treat you poorly or hurt you or talk down to you? Do you think you deserve to be treated badly because you think you're not important? Do you think God even cares about you at all? Take a moment to get honest with yourself. Think about the way you feel about yourself. Ask God to remind you this Easter that his love is for you. To him, you are seen, known, and valued. So much so that his son Jesus died and rose again just so he could be with you. And that makes you important. Next, think about how you treat others. One of the most important things we can do this Easter is show Jesus' love to others. And we can start by treating others with the same value that Jesus did. We can show people no matter who they are, that they're important to us by listening to them, inviting them to be a part of our group, standing up for them when they're being mistreated, learning about people of different races, ethnicities, or religions, or simply saying hello in the hallway. Doing that not only shows that we care, but it gives them a glimpse of God's love working through us. It shows them they're important. Remember, Easter reminds us we're important no matter what. And one of the best places to practice this is in your group. There you have a leader who values you, somebody who believes you are so very important. And they wanna help you not only begin to believe this about yourself, but to show it to other people as well. Happy Easter.